Hello. Let's say you want to add uh, bone rotation constraints to an inverse kinematic uh, bone or skeleton. So let's say we delete, we delete the box. We add a single bone, scale it up a little. Let's go into uh, side view. Um, let's uh, go to edit mode, select the bone, let's um, switch direction, and let's move it up, and we'll extrude Extrude that as a second bone, and we're going to extrude a target to control these two bones in the inverse kin kinematics. So we'll go ahead and select that and unparent it, clear parent, and then we'll select this. Oh, no, we'll go to pose mode. Uh, we'll select that and uh, we'll go to bone constraints and we'll add a inverse kinematic bone constraint and we'll target the armature and the last bone that we added was bone.002 and then it should start working immediately. Um, you can select that bone and use a shortcut G to move it around. Now, as you can see, the bones go, it works, um, but the bones go crazy. They go all over the place. So let's say you want to add some constraints. You you don't want them, you know, to go, to go in every single direction like that. You know, say it's a leg, for example, and you want it to just move like a leg does. So um, how do you do that real quick? Um, let's say in you stay in this screen and you look around you say select this bone and you go to bone constraints and you see well why don't I just add this this limit rotation doesn't that work? And you see all these options like it should work, right? Well, it doesn't work from this on, on either of these. Uh, from here, from pose mode and adding it to this. The way you have to do it is uh, go to the bone and then just go to the inverse kinematics it's a separate thing and here's all the stuff that you can use to uh, limit rotation and it, and it all makes sense and works why they have in pose mode this available here and this drop down available here and this uh, here and it doesn't actually do what you think it's gonna do it's kinda too bad but in you go to impose mode, you go to the bone that you want to constrain, go down to inverse kinematics, and then you have all your options right here. Let's say we select this, and uh, let's uh, now grab that bone, and now that you see that, that it doesn't move it at all, and it'll behave exactly as you as you hope. Back there, and let's say we want to limit that direction. You see, it doesn't move, it moves in side to side only, and it rotates, I think. Uh, okay. Now let's say. Oh, 
to get it front just front to back and that's it so if we uh, turn off Y and Z let's do the same thing to this You see, it does. It'll move like a leg. Now, let's say you wanted to um, move like a leg with a, a knee joint. So you go to limit. Um, uh, which one was it? select the bone you want to limit and it will show you an arc with all the, uh, the the range of motion built in so let's say you want it to only go that much that direction and that much that direction and this leg but lower leg same thing let's say like a knee you don't want it to go further than that and that's That's pretty easy. Now let's say, because th this is the starting position that we started with, and we want it for whatever reason, you want this to start up here and end somewhere arbitrarily up here. Like you don't want this to have this sort of limit. Well, obviously, in edit mode, when you create the bone, the bones you that'll be like its starting position and the range of motion will start zero wherever this in its local space here so it's you would uh let's see if I'm with that. Now you see that the you've shifted the zero to here. Now it goes up and it's it does what you want want it to do. Hope that helps.